the coalition supports only those forces committed to fighting ISIS, coalition spokesman U.S. Army Colonel Ryan Dillon told CNN. But one U.S.-backed group which calls itself the Shoadu al Qurtian has balked at the restriction, opting to leave the base to carry out independent operations against Syrian regime troops several U.S. and coalition officials told CNN. The officials added that other local allies remain at the garrison and continue to cooperate with coalition advisors. The Shoadu al Qurtian have made it known that they may want to pursue other objectives. The coalition is making it clear to Shoadu al Qurtian leadership that if they choose to pursue other objectives, the coalition will no longer support their operations, Dillon said. The Pentagon refers to its local allies in southeastern Syria as vetted Syrian opposition a name that highlights the fact that many of these fighters became organized in opposition to the government of Bashar al-Assad, this group differs from the much larger Syrian democratic forces, a mix of Kurdish and Arab fighters that are fighting to eject ISIS from Raqqa in northern Syria. These vetted Syrian opposition forces are being trained and equipped by U.S. and coalition military advisors at the Atanf base which sits near the tri-border area between Syria, Jordan, and Iraq. A U.S. defense official told CNN that the commander of the Shoadu al Qurtian group, Mohammad Qasim, had taken his forces outside the 55 kilometer de confliction zone surrounding Atanf to carry out independent operations against pro regime forces. The zone had been established by the U.S. and Russia to prevent clashes between pro regime forces and coalition forces and their local allies. CNN has previously reported that pro-regime forces had established a number of outposts and checkpoints in the area near the deconfliction zone. U.S. officials have told CNN they believe pro-regime militias backed by Iran are setting up a series of checkpoints as part of an effort to establish a strategic overland route from Iran to the Mediterranean coast. That proximity had led to some clashes last month including U.S. airstrikes against regime forces who had encroached on the zone and U.S. jets shooting down two pro-regime drones that were perceived to pose a threat to local allies and their coalition advisors. But the Pentagon has noted that tensions between the coalition and regime forces had abated in recent weeks and the U.S. and coalition have urged all parties to focus on fighting ISIS. We are not in the business of fighting the regime, a coalition official told CNN. They can't have multiple objectives and we need to be singularly focused on fighting ISIS, the official said, adding that there were still significant numbers of U.S.-backed fighters at Atanf and that it was possible that not all members of the Shoadu al Qurtian group would follow their leader in pursuing anti-regime operations. A U.S. defense official told CNN that the unit's commander had been in negotiations with coalition officials to bring his fighters back to Atanf and was due to return Tuesday, however the official said the commander sent two of his deputies in his place who explained that their operations outside the deconfliction zone were defensive in nature aimed at thwarting pro-regime forces The tensions between the rebel group and the U.S. military over fighting Assad comes days after the head of Special Operations Command, General Tony Thomas appeared to confirm a Washington Post report that the Trump administration had ended a classified CIA program to arm anti-Assad rebels in Syria, yet despite the recent termination of that program and the pressure on the military's local allies not to fight Assad's forces, President Trump said Tuesday that he was not a fan of the Syrian leader. I am not a fan of Assad. I certainly think that what he's done to that country and to humanity is horrible, Trump said during a White House press conference with Lebanese Prime Minister Prime Minister Saad Hariri.